Well, good afternoon. It's afternoon here anyway in Japan. Uh, this year, since uh, I could not go out to the uh, Fukidan shows to show you those this year, as I've done in the past, um, I've decided to go ahead and hold a little Fukidan show, or what's called Fukidan Ten, here in uh, my house. And this is a traditional Japanese house, so it actually is uh, appropriate. And I am wearing traditional Japanese summer garb. It's called yukata. Uh, this is a kind of an informal kimono, which is worn by uh, anybody, basically, in the summertime as part of uh, the traditional culture here and uh, celebrating Japanese life in the summer. Okay, well... Speaking of celebrating Japanese life in the summer, here we have this uh, little taste of Fukidan. Okay, Fukidan are, of course, the selected forms of Neophonetia, or a better, more scientifically known as Vanda, Falcada. This is an orchid that is found in Eastern Asia, including Korea, China, and Japan. And um, anyway, so today I want to go ahead and run through the different things I have. This represents about a third of my collection. Um, so uh, what I want to show you today is I want to show you some of the flower forms and the leaf forms and the, the various aspects of uh, Fukidan. So anyway, let's go ahead. I'm going to break these all down and I'll talk a little bit about uh, what makes each type uh, specific and interesting and also to talk about some of the attributes of Fukidan in general. So here we go. Okay, so first up is Tamakongo. Tamakongo is a very famous um, bean leaf type. Uh, you can see that the flowers here, some of these have opened earlier, so they're already starting to fade, and then the rest of the plant is still in full flower. Anyway, uh, you can see that it has this mame type leaf. It's got a very uh, round leaf, kind of what they call a soybean leaf. Um, and they're very, so they're kind of fat and thickened, right? Okay, and then these flowers themselves, too, also have this more compressed shape, which is different than you would have uh, from a, uh, a typical Fukidan or Fudan, that's a Neophonetia flower. Also notice that the spur is much shorter in length than the normal uh, Fukidan or Fudan flower. Uh, also notice the great root development on this. Um, uh, several years back, I just decided to go ahead and hang this guy because he was getting so darn big. I didn't know what to do with him, and I thought it would be best to go ahead and uh, just let him go. And so look at him go. He's going like crazy. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll look at a very similar variety now. Okay, so a similar plant is this plant, Tachi Daiho. And um, Tachi means standing. Um, and as you can see, the leaves on this have a more of an upright stance. Uh, hence the idea of a standing bean leaf type. This is another bean leaf type. And I wish I could show you. Well, you can kind of see it down here. If you look down here, you'll see the root tip growing. And that is a typical root tip known as dorone or a mud root tip. Okay, so that's another feature of Fukidan is the uh, the color of the root tip. Okay, so that's a very similar variety, uh, almost uh, to the uh, novice anyway, almost indistinguishable from uh, Tamakongo. Okay, two more really cool uh, types are uh, of the uh, mame leaf or the bean leaf is uh, Senzai here on the right and Kuroshinju here on the left. Uh, again, to the untrained eye, these appear to be uh, essentially identical plants, and if indeed you saw them in flower, you would see that the flower types are very similar as well. Um, this type of a flower, you can see that the, the um, spur has got that little hook to it, that hooked spur. That's very typical of uh, these flowers, both for both types. Um, they call this flower type uh, ume petaled, or uh, ume being the 
plum tree, so the plum flower petal. So that kind of rounded petal. One of the giveaways that these are not uh, the same, though, if you look, and this is kind of hard to see, and I'll try to do a close-up of it, but right here on the Kuroshinji, you'll see that the leaf, uh, that the leaf, the root tip is this mud type, okay? So that's that kind of that brownish color, whereas on the uh, Senzai, it's a green tip, okay? So that's one of the giveaways. Leaf structure is a little bit different too, uh, but again, to the untrained eye, uh, very difficult to tell. Um, one other thing about these plants, this is this point of attachment on the, the leaf blade onto the axis, okay, or the stem. And there's that little attachment point, which would be analogous to a petiole. And what it is when it has a slight curve to it or a pretty good curve to it, they call that a, uh, a moon attachment or in Japanese tsuke. Okay, so this is kind of a moon suke. Okay, so uh, both of these have a moon suke. Moon is probably the most common uh, type of uh, leaf attachment in these plants. Both of these are grown from seed, they're true from seed, and so uh, they can be kind of variable, and at the same time, they have a, a very similar uh, pattern to their uh, the plant that they were taken from. But anyway, uh, there's two little cool uh, dwarf uh, mame leaf or bean leaf types. Uh, here's another bean leaf type. This is uh, kinkujaku, uh, which means golden peacock. As you can see, uh, we have the mame type leaf, very much like tamakongo. It's almost identical looking to tamakongo, uh, but it has this uh, golden flushing to the leaf. This again is uh, kind of, I mean, it, it is seen in a number of uh, different plants and particularly some of the tiger leaf forms. Uh, this one is a, a kind of a peculiar in between. It's almost like a, it's a bean leaf, but it's kind of like a tiger leaf. This has a, a flower that is not like Tamakongo though. It's more like a standard uh, Fukidan type flower. Tsuke on this one is a standard moon style tsuke. Um, lovely type. Really cool plant. Okay, here's another really cool uh, leaf type um, that also has a lovely flower. Uh, this is King Gindasha. And there's quite a few things that are interesting about this plant. You'll see that it's got that dorone or that um, mud type uh, <clears throat> root tip. Um, also notice that it has this kind of a curvature to the leaf. That curvature is called a hime ba, or the hime leaf, which is literally means princess leaf. Very elegant arc to it, which is a very uh, common feature in a lot of Fukidan and is, um, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a desired trait, certainly. You'll notice, though, that the leaves are kind of thin and it's a very upright, so it's a kind of a standing upright hime leaf and that's narrow. Also notice that the tsuke on it are uh, the typical, again, uh, moon type. But notice that below the attachment point, particularly on the older uh, growths, that it is a darker color. Okay, so you'll see some of this too. So when that reaches a certain kind of a blue color, they, they uh, call that a blue axis. Okay, a blue uh, colored um, axis and it really is what it is is it really is the petiole base or the base of the petiole so when the leaf breaks off on a leaf on a plant it'll break at that little tsuke at that little attachment point and a lot of times the petiole will stay there for a while so if you've seen that out of the plants it's analogous to that anyway one of the things that's really cool about this plant and you can't really see it right here too well but if you feel the leaf it's really a kind of a rough feeling almost like a rasp uh, this is called dasha leaf. A dasha leaf is uh, a kind of a, a felt or a, kind of this rough uh, textured leaf. Dasha literally meaning felt. So a really cool type. This also has a flower not unlike um, something like uh, one of the previous uh, ones we saw, like Senzai, almost like that ume flower with a little hook spur. And uh, they're upright facing and they have this wonderful way of holding their flowers even as they're fading so that 
they hold the the new ones and the old ones together, kind of like we saw with the Tamakongo earlier. And uh, it just creates this beautiful golden and white or silver flower all at the same time. Okay, well, here's one of the uh, more famous of the Fukidan. This is uh, Seikai. Um, Seikai has a, uh, quite a few features about it that are interesting. It is a Dorone again. That's not one of its interesting features. But one of its interesting features are these uh, wonderful leaves that are just this, it's this kind of that Hime leaf. It, but it's a, a real uh, almost mame leaf again, and it's, it's hooked in this interesting way. And if you look down, look at the leaf axis there. Um, it has, uh, now different authorities will do, say different things. Um, the tsuke is either what we call nami or yama. And I don't know, I see conflicting uh, information on that about on the internet. I always thought it was a nami type. A nami type kind of has like almost a wave to it. Nami means wave. And uh, Yama is more of like an up and down. But uh, anyway, and if you look below that, look at the leaf axis there, which is called Jiku in Japanese. This is what we call Aojiku, which is just kind of a purple or blue colored, uh, technically that's blue owl, uh, colored uh, tsuke. So that's another feature. And it has wonderful flowers uh, that are very similar to its near relative which is um, this guy here, which is Unkai, okay? And uh, Unkai is uh, a neat little plant in its own right. You'll notice these strange flowers that it has. Um, this uh, kind of a leaf form is more of a Hime type, like we saw with the King Rasha earlier, right? So it doesn't have that bean leaf and that real hooked leaf, but it's got more of the Hime type leaf. Kind of a mid-range, not a narrow uh, type leaf, but it's got these weird flowers, right? And uh, this flower type is fairly rare in uh, the Fukidan world. There are a number of plants that have it, but I believe most of them are originating from this guy, uh, which was a wild collected plant over 100 years ago. Uh, definitely not a hybrid. This is for sure a pure uh, strange Fukidan or strange Nifinity Falcata form. Anyway, this is more of a, a purple, uh, purpley pink flower, and this guy is a more of a, um, a, a light pink kind of a flower on him. Um, so, anyway, there's two more really famous and cool Fukidan. Okay, another real uh, popular Fukidan is Onami Seikai. Okay, Onami Seikai is uh, quite different than Seikai. Uh, but uh, you can see it has a, a very large flower, okay, for, uh, I mean, even for Fukidan in general, the, the flower is a kind of a large flower. It's got that uh, more typical hooking spur. Uh, probably one of the most distinguishing features on this thing is these big, crazy curved leaves, okay, which tend to also kind of have a wave to them, so they're kind of like an odd thing. Um... They are, in this case, the root tip is actually a green root tip, okay? And the, let's see if I can show you. The tsuke in this case actually is a nami tsuke. So it's got this kind of like little wave pattern to it. Okay, yeah, onami seikai, another great one. Okay, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time with this one, uh, primarily because uh, it's not even a... Uh, uh, whatever you would call it, I guess a registered form, right? So the Japanese Fukidan Society are the uh, people who regulate uh, what forms are considered uh, stable enough to be considered registered and part of the registry. Uh, this is not one. This is one that was created by somebody. I'm going to go ahead and guess that it was probably a Korean sourced, as are many Fukidan these days. Uh, but anyway, here you can see the uh, this kind of a, a tiger pattern. And here it's even uh, growing from the center of the growing point, which is like a whole other type of, of tiger leaf. So the tiger leaves can have quite a range of colors, but this is the kind of a pattern that you see on a tiger leaf. Uh, I think the name that they gave this one was uh, Tenjitsu, which basically means sun or the sun. So uh, again, not a name form, but anyway, it gives you an idea 
of what a, a tiger leaf looks like. Okay, so the next up is a, a very well-known uh, variegated type in Japan. This is Tenkei Fukurin. This is a, a good standard Fukurin type. This is now Fukurin, meaning it has like this green in the middle and then on the edges is where the variegation is, okay? So when you get that kind of a stable pattern, then that would be a Fukurin type variegation. Uh, this is one of the more popular ones, one of the more well-known ones, uh, and it has this kind of a, a yellow leaf. Um, now out front too there, you might have seen earlier in the video, I had another uh, plant that looks similar to this. That's Gojo Fukurin. And uh, Gojo has a, a very similar type look to it. As a matter of fact, when you put the Gojo next to the uh, Tenkei Fukurin, it's kind of hard to tell the two apart. Uh, another very well-known Fukurin type is this. This is Nishide Miyako. Uh, this one is different from the Tenkei, and the Tenkei has a more uh, stable um, variegation to it, that Fukurin variegation. And also you'll notice that the, uh, the uh, Jiku, or the leaf attachment, has a more purple color uh, and if you can look at it even closer you'll see that the stems also have quite a bit of purple on them and what this kind of shows you is that this plant has a little more uh, variability in terms of its variegation and you can see right here we have one two three different babies come in here with a very different kind of pattern of uh, variegation and in particular this one here uh, is almost what you would call a ghost pattern, meaning that if you pop this plant off and you put him into a pot by himself, he probably would not make it. So he needs another growth, uh, a green growth attached to, or a largely green growth like one of these, uh, attached to it to keep it going. If this type uh, stabilizes and it has a kind of a ruby red tip, because you'll notice that the adult plant does, I mean, the, the, the regular Nishide Miyako plant does not have a ruby tip. It has a, I think that's a dorone, actually. I think that's a, uh, just a, yeah, that is, that's a mud. So that kind of a mud root tip is, again, sort of the common color of root tips in uh, Fukidan. So green or, or this mud is typical. The Manuzuru actually has this ruby red, so it's this brilliant red. And it all depends upon uh, basically when this thing is growing off, that new growth is coming off and the meristem is forming. It's determining the type of leaf pattern that the plant, this particular fan is going to have. So you notice that on this fan and this fan, the variegation is slightly different. That's because they have a different uh, meristem down there. So anyway, if they stabilize with that kind of that bright, uh, where the... the Basically, the, the yellow to white part has taken over much of the leaf and it's no longer Fukurin, really. Sometimes it's even reversed, where it's, you'll see it's dark on the outside and white on the inside. And it gets those ruby tips, then you can call that uh, a manazuru. Um, there are a number of varieties that have come off of Nishide Miyako. That's why it's kind of an exciting plant. There's another tiny one called Tama Nishiki, which basically looks like uh, Nishide Miyako, only it's tiny and it stays dwarf and it's just the coolest little thing. Anyway, so here's a really cool uh, and very popular uh, type of Fukurin. And here we have yet another type of uh, variegated leaf. Uh, in this case, this is the plant called Nain no Hikari. Um, and what you'll notice about this is that it has what we call the Shima leaf. And you'll see that many times, not always, but with the Shima leaf, one side of the leaf will have a stripe of green and the other side will have a stripe of red. Uh, I mean, of the white or the, the variegation. Um, and you'll notice that in this one too, there can also be these other little streaks. And let's see if I can find a good example. Yeah, kind of up in here, these other little streaks that even though at the base of the leaf they start, uh, they may not make it all the way to the end of the tip and they can be highly variable. You can also get these kind of ghost growths again. 
uh, where again these if you popped them off they would not be able to handle it on their own. So this is really kind of a cool type that's highly variable, but this kind of variegation, you could see it very well on this little new growth coming here, is what we call the Shima type leaf, which basically just means striped. Uh, yeah, really cool. And you can see here, they can even have a nearly pure green leaf too. So what a, what a wacky little plant. But in its own little strange way, it's stabilized to, uh, to this kind of a form where it's, it's variable and yet at the same time stable enough to be considered a form all its own uh, line of hikari. Well, if you're still watching this video, <laughs> and hopefully you are, <laughs> you can see yet another type of uh, leaf. And this is a, a pretty typical needle leaf type. It's characterized by these little ultra thin, uh, little pine needle like leaves, very, very thin. Uh, the uh, axis is also very thin, tends to be elongate, definitely has this kind of standing up pattern. Um, these are not what you call uh, real uh, showy flowers. In this particular case, this one, it will shoot one flower out of the center in the fall usually, not now, and then that growth uh, sometimes will just die or it'll stop growing and it'll grow a bunch of new growths out. And hence these things tend to get really bushy. So I bought this thing as maybe about four growths about 10 years ago and you can see that it's just gone to town. Uh, this was sold to me as Tosui um, and I, I haven't been able to confirm on that whether that really is Tosui or not. Uh, it does have a slightly pink flower, but Tosui has a definitely a much brighter pink flowers. Not pink, brighter not meaning very deep pink, but still pink. Uh, so I don't know. It, it might be named wrong. In fact, the man that I bought it from, who is a very uh, knowledgeable uh, person on Fukidan, was also uh, unsure of that particular name. So uh, this is a kind of a, an enigma, but uh, maybe one day I can show it to somebody that can tell me what I got. Anyway, there's a, another type, the pine needle type. So it's really, uh, hey, look at that thing. It's pretty crazy, right? That shows you, <laughs> it's a big, big plant. Okay, finally, we're getting to the, uh, the colored flower types. Uh, this has got a green flower, as you can see. This is called hisui, which literally translates as jade. Um, this is uh, a kind of a hime type leaf, as you can see. The jiku in this case is a kind of that blue type jiku, so that kind of bluish or purplish attachment point. Typical uh, moon-shaped tsuke or attachment point. Uh, the real outstanding part of this plant are these uh, green flowers. And so this is probably the most uh, <clears throat> famous and well celebrated of the green flower types. Again, this is not a hybrid this is a true Neofinete falcata. Um, <clears throat> this particular plant is actually growing quite well right now, but a few years back it had a setback and uh, with a kind of a, I don't know, it just wasn't happy and it was losing leaves and I had to rejuvenate it, <coughs> which I did. And uh, it's throwing, you know, some okay flowers now, but they can, they can flower much, much better than this. Uh, so I'm hoping that next year it'll be uh, giving us uh, a grander display. But anyway, there it is, Hisui, uh, another neat uh, flower form. But in this case, it's the flower that's cool, not so much the plant. Okay, so here is a, uh, a nice classic pink flowered uh, form called Beni Suzume. This is uh, one that also is true from seed. Most of the uh, colored flowered forms and the interesting flowered forms with some exceptions, are true from seed. Wonderful little flowers. They tend to be small like that. I love how they're little. They just curl up. The, the, the petals and the sepals curl up and form that gorgeous little flower. And they have this wonderful little hooking purple spur as well with a little bright light green uh, end to it. Uh, just an amazing little plant. Okay, so I'm leaving the, the best for last here. This is this neat little uh, purple flowered form or pink flowered form called Oiran. Um, Oiran literally means um, a young geisha, we'll just say, is what they call maiko-san. And another word for maiko-san is oiran. So this is basically a young 
you know, geisha. A few things that you'll notice about it, uh, not just the purple flower, but you'll notice that this deep purple uh, jiku uh, attachment point, um, that is a very, that's a giveaway that you're looking at one of these. Uh, also, here you can see there's a little spur here. There's a spur there. This one too is a little spur here, spur there. Ah, so those guys got two spurs, and this guy, yep, he's got a sec, he's got a second little spur there too, almost like an auxiliary little spur. This is the three-spurred pink flowered uh, fukidan. Okay, so probably some of you know manjushage. I have manjushage, but um, it's either not flowering yet; it might be in bud, or it's uh, not going to bloom this year. In any event. That is this uh, three-spurred flower type. Well, um, I'm not sure of the details, but I believe one of those three, maybe all three of these types, Oiran, Beni Kanzashi, Hana Kanzashi, are the product of the hybridization of uh, the purple flower plant Shutano, I believe, and uh, Manjushage to create this uh, purple would-be three-spurred plant. Look at the spur that is there. It is this really exquisite uh, pink purple spur again with that little green emerald green tip. When these things have the three spurs, they're really spectacular. Tough to do it, particularly when you have a young plant like this. Now you look at this plant is very vigorous, uh, but uh, believe it or not, getting these things to flower with a, a stable three spurt is really hard. Doesn't matter how good you are at growing Fukidan, uh, you're going to end up with something similar to this much of the time. Uh, it's just one of those things. Um, I've seen plants where there's you know 15, 20 growths. You see, you know, half of the flowers have the beautiful three spurs. Uh, a quarter of the flowers have the kind of this sort of two spur, two and a half spur thing, and then the rest of the flowers just have one spur. So, uh, kind of tough thing to get this thing to flower perfectly. Manjushage, by the way, is not that way. Manjushage will go with the, uh, the stable three spur. So, if you want a stable three spur plant, Manjushage is definitely a great uh, choice. Uh, anyway, so there it is. Uh, here's this really cool plant. I'm so glad to have finally bloomed it. This is the first time it's bloomed decent for me, and I have some more seedlings of this coming up now, so I'm excited to try to get those to uh, the flower well. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, rearrange all these guys, have a seat, and talk a little bit about uh, some more things, culture, and also some of these pots you've been seeing, which are kind of cool. Okay, a final thing to highlight are uh, with Fukidan are the pots, and... Um, Normally you see them growing inside these <clears throat> typical plastic pots that are made specifically for Neophonidia. But uh, also we have these lovely uh, other pots here. For instance, this one is a, uh, a tiger. And um, also on this pot, so there's this uh, tiger, which is a very, that's a common motif on these pots. A uh, tiger is a, uh, of course, uh, an emblem of power. Actually, in fact, my zodiac sign, my Chinese zodiac sign is the tiger. Uh, and you can also see that on the back there is a wave here, which is a very uh, typical pattern. Also notice that the rim or the lip of this is unadorned in any way. Uh, this is just a plain lip, and uh, but it has a, a gold rim. So that rim is uh, a very common... Uh, color. Next one here is another common pattern. This is a uh, tsuru or it's what we call in English crane, the crane pattern. So again, cranes are uh, very emblematic of Japan, uh, signifying long life among other things. Uh, so this is another pattern. Again, a very plain uh, rim on that, which is typical. Okay. Uh, here we have a slightly different thing. This is not really a Fukidan pot exactly. It's a, um, it could be used for Fukidan, but uh, more commonly you would be seeing other things in this, like uh, the Choseiran, which is the uh, Dendrobium miniliformi, especially uh, special forms. Uh, again, here we have this uh, plain uh, golden lip and this uh, lovely little pattern. That's pretty. So you can use those for Fukidan, though. 
Uh, getting on to something a little bit more special. Uh, here we can see a fairly uh, common pattern for a Fukidan pot, this kind of a checkered pattern, and you'll see it almost looks like a Mexican motif here. And uh, one thing you also notice about the uh, Fukidan pots is they have one, two, three uh, little stand points. Okay, so that's uh, typical of uh, Fukidan pots. This is not a plain lip. This is a uh, what we call a rope. Uh, lip. Okay, and so uh, that's uh, a very uh, special type and it runs a little more money. So uh, typically one of these will be twice the price of a normal pot, which can already be quite expensive. But anyway, that style is more uh, sought after. And then further, uh, here we have uh, another pot that's actually quite special, and it has the other very common uh, type of, of uh, design on there, and that is the uh, dragon. Dragons as well are also symbols of power. Actually, my wife, her Chinese zodiac is a dragon, so a tiger married a dragon. Boy, is that a good idea? I don't know. This one's very beautifully done, and you can also notice that the stands on these have these extra ornamentation, as does that tiger pot, which I didn't show you. Um, and that also uh, shows a higher quality pot that's going to be uh, more expensive. So this pot, because of its fine craftsmanship, uh, is also going to be more money, even though it has the plain uh, golden rim. Um, yeah, so uh, there's another aspect of... Uh, keeping Fukidan. Now, they're not grown in this normally, right? So this is only for the shows. So these plants, I actually pop them uh, out of the little plastic pots, right? And I take them out, put them in there. Uh, if you really want to be uh, careful about it, then you would actually repot the plant maybe a month or so before the show. Give the moss a chance to set and then it'll easily pop out of the new pot, old pot and then just put it right into the uh, into one of these fancy pots. These fancy pots are called Nishiki Bachi, which basically means Nishiki is like the um, the fancy clothes of a lord or somebody like that, right? So this, these are the you know, highfalutin clothes of the day way back when. And uh, Bachi means pot. So uh, this is the fancy clothing for the Fukidan plants. I'm going to state straight up that uh, my plants are not in the top form, right? So they're, they're okay. Um, I'm running into some problems with roots here and there. And that's primarily because uh, I am lazy. Um, if you want to keep Fukidan in a good condition, you actually need to repot, uh, honestly, I think every year. Looking at it now, that would be my uh, suggestion. If you're going to go with this traditional sphagnum moss uh, method, um, if you want to grow them other ways, for instance, mounted like these guys here, you don't ever actually have to worry about uh, doing anything except remounting them if the mount gives way and you need to put them on something else. Uh, but if you're growing them in sphagnum, then you need to uh, be on that uh, religiously. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is you're going to run into trouble. You'll see with quite a few of these, like this little Nishide Miyako. I mean, here it is in this gorgeous pot, and these, these roots are just bleh, all over. Look at this, these big, wild roots. Well, that's because that's what Fukidan do, right? They're not going to grow the roots down into the moss, right? They want to do this kind of thing, right? So uh, in nature, they would have some aerial leaves, uh, uh, roots like this, and then some of the roots, uh, most of the roots would be sticking onto whatever the growing substrate is, which is usually a tree branch or a rock. They seem to grow on either equally well. Uh, otherwise, they're going to be shooting at all these crazy roots. Um, Anami Seikai, I, I did repot this year, and you can see it's nice and tidy looking. And, uh, you know, I don't do a great, great job repotting because, um, again, I'm, I'm a kind of a lazy man about it. One more thing about these things, because I'm catching it now. Mm, it's getting towards evening now. And the smell. I mean, to grow these just for the smell alone. At night when I come home uh, from a day's work and outside, I have all those plants out there. 
uh, and there is just this wafting odor of, of this incredible, uh, what is it, kind of a sweet candy-like smell? I mean, it's just dynamite. So uh, that alone is reason enough to be growing these things. So uh, anyway, if you like Fukidan, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you know nothing about Fukidan, hopefully you learned a little something from the video. Uh, I'll put links uh, up here right now to some of my other Fukidan show um, videos and you can see some of the other forms. Also, I'll put a link somewhere, uh, possibly at the end or right now, I don't know. Uh, to my uh, blog, and you can read a little bit more about Fukidan as well. Uh, great little hobby, but be warned ahead of time, they are very addictive, uh, and you are going to be spending more money than you want if you're not careful, so please <laughs> bear that in mind. I take no responsibility. I am an incurable fool with regard to plants in general, and so don't listen to me because <laughs> I'm going to steer you the wrong way. But seriously, you can spend a heck of a lot of money. I've been collecting these plants for uh, going on 17 years now or something like that. So, uh, you know, this didn't happen overnight. In fact, I haven't bought a new Fukidan in years. Most of these have been with me for uh, at least a minimum of 10 years. So anyway, um, there it is. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I will see you again in the next video. Well, hello. It's about two weeks after that last video clip I did showing you my main flowering of Fukidan. And as I might have mentioned in that clip, uh, some of the plants are flowering at later times, sometimes earlier. Well, here's my latest plants of the season. So right now it's July 21st. So it's coming up on August. And uh, we have this lovely thing in flower and this lovely thing in flower. This is a Kyushu plant known as Omidori, which literally means giant green. Uh, so... This plant is largely collected for its uh, late flowering is great, but these huge green hime-type leaves. So this is a very kind of a graceful arc to the leaf that's called a hime leaf or a princess leaf. And this is a kind of a very delicate princess leaf. It's not the big curve like you get on like Unkai. It's more of this, this gentle. Um, and uh, you can also see that there is a, a flushing in the nectary of a kind of a purple color as well. The flowers are rather large, but the giant in the name is not for the flower so much, but for these uh, big, wonderful leaves. Um, also, you can see down here, I went ahead and I put down a little senzai. And uh, senzai, as you might have remembered, is a little uh, mame leaf or uh, bean leaf type. And this kind of represents some of the uh, the smaller end of the Fukidan, okay? So this is about as small as they get in terms of their natural stature, and this is about as big as they get, okay? So here you're seeing the two ends of the spectrum. Um, mind you that these plants are this uh, size, not because of the culture that I gave them, but because that is actually their natural uh, growing habit. Okay, and these are pure Fukidan. These are pure Neophenedia slash Vanda Falcata. Okay, they're not been hybridized at all. Um, so anyway, here's this lovely plant, um, Omidori, which is, uh, again, like I said, from Kyushu Island. Now, this is a kind of a southern place here, warmer growing, uh, and you can get some of these later flowering forms. Similarly, over here, we have another uh, late flowering plant. It always flowers late for me. This is Manjushage. Um, this is the famous three-spurred plant that uh, was derived from uh, Amami stock. Now, if you're in the Fukidan world, you've probably heard this Amami, Amami Island form. Um, and in general, what people think of is they think of something large, and uh, maybe late flowering like this guy here. Well, um, they definitely do seem to be late flowering, that's for sure. Uh, but 
the other thing about amami types is they also are um, a little bit more sensitive to the cold, which makes sense because Amami Island is a place that is between Kyushu, which is the southernmost main island where I live, uh, and Okinawa, which everybody knows. But spatially, maybe you don't understand. Amami Oshima is about halfway between the two. Uh, maybe it's a little bit closer. I don't know. I would have to think about that. That's no, probably about halfway between the two. So this is a very famous place for uh, its Neophonetia. Uh, many of the forms that have been created, uh, especially in recent times, have, uh, have a mommy stock. And here is Manjushage, one of them. Again, you can see uh, the pink flushing in the nectaries. Uh, it is starting to fade a little bit now, but um, you can still get a, a, an idea of its beauty. This used to be a really expensive plant back about, um, I don't know, 10 years ago. But now uh, it actually is quite common. It's grown from seed, and so, uh, and it comes true from seed. So here we are uh, with plenty of these plants around. Um, you can also see that um, this is a, uh, can we call a standing hime? So it's got that, that same bending leaf, a little more narrow on the leaf, right? So the leaf is not the broader type like that. It's more this thin uh, standing leaf, and it's got a, a slight bend to it. And uh, anyway, so here's another wonderful plant uh, from uh, the Southern Islands area. Well, that's it pretty much for the uh, Fukidan season this year. Once these guys finish up, uh, the flowering is done. And then the only thing you can do is enjoy the plants, which in and of themselves are quite nice. I have a large clump back there in my garden that is uh, in flower right now. And uh, I'm assuming that must be derived from uh, Southern forms. I don't know. I bought them years ago as a group. They were all in one pot and there's more than one clone in there, but they all tend to bloom late. Uh, so maybe I'll finish off the video with that in full glorious bloom. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and you got to see some Fukidan in a sort of a, you know, Fukidan show type setting, although it's just my house. Uh, and with any luck next season, we can get back out and uh, see these plants in uh, a real Fukidan show uh, next year. But uh, anyway, there they are. Hope you enjoyed it.